Hello guys, I am Paul McWhorter and I am here with lesson number 25 on using the Arduino microcontroller. In the series of uh, material that we're covering right now is creating a GPS tracker using the Arduino and today we kind of bring that work to culmination to where we show you how you can display your data from your GPS you can display that track on Google Earth. And what we did is we, uh, in lesson number 23, we showed you how to hook the GPS up. We're using the most excellent Adafruit Ultimate GPS, how to hook that up to the Arduino, and then how to also have on there an SD card that you can write the data to. So the Arduino is taking data from the Adafruit GPS, doing a little formatting and putting it onto the SD card. We got all of that working in lesson number 23. But in lesson number 23, we weren't doing a lot of work on parsing the data. We were just sort of throwing it out onto the SD card in the format that it was coming to us in. And so we were just sort of giving the <coughs> latitude as reported by the GPS, the longitude as reported by the GPS, and just uh, just saving those uh, saving those numbers onto the card. And so we could bring the card out, plug it into the computer, and get those numbers, and then plug them one at a time into Google Earth over here and sort of see where we were. But we, that's kind of kludgy. What we really want to do is we want to take that file <coughs> off of the SD card and we want to get something like this like I went for a little walk this morning and you can see that I went uh, outside the front of the school and I kinda of walked down the street I promise you I was not staggering I was <laughs> I was very sober and I was walking in a straight line but there's a little bit of noise in the data and you can see I went around the corner and I kinda of came back and then went around the gym I was trying to kinda of come up here and go up and down the uh, the bleachers at the football field but uh, you know I found that the gate was locked here so I had to come back around this way went up the bleachers and came back so came back took the card out plugged it into the uh, computer loaded the file into Google Earth and lo and behold I am uh, <coughs> getting that track of my walk to show up in Google Earth now this is not hard but it is tedious okay <coughs> So we're going to go, and the real main part today is you've already got, if you've gone through Lesson 23, you've got this working. If you've gone through Lesson 4, you understand that those NEMA sentences, you understand what it means, the data that is coming off of the GPS. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to take this circuit that works from Lesson 23, and we're going to take our understanding of the NEMA sentence from Lesson 24, and what we're going to do is to take the data that is coming from the GPS, and we're going to put it into a format that Google Earth will like, and then boom, we can read that data in. In a future lesson, I can actually show you how to build one of these things that will do it live in real time, but we'll have to add some telemetry to this thing. But the real sort of key step is in this uh, is, is in this lesson. So if you haven't done lesson 23 and lesson 24, you really need to do those before you undertake this lesson. Okay, so let's just kind of review what we are doing here. We are using the Arduino microcontroller. Oh yeah, all this stuff, go to toptechboy.com and then you can look under Arduino lessons and then you can find this as lesson number 25 because I'm, I'm starting you out with some, uh, with some code and stuff that you're gonna, that you're gonna need. So we're using the Arduino, the Adafruit Ultimate GPS, the SD card reader that we are using is the Virtua Botix SD card reader. And then uh, if you're going to go outside, you need a battery clip. And so you'll need to get your uh, equipment uh, uh, put together. Also, one of the things I like to do is I, I like to use rechargeable batteries. And so if you don't have a rechargeable battery, find you a good rechargeable battery. And that way you can always go out with a nice fresh uh, go out with a nice fresh uh, nice fresh battery. Well, where are we going to start? This is lesson 25, and what we really need to do, though, is lesson 24, remember, explains how the NEMA sentences work and how the data formatting works for these GPS. But we need to go back to lesson number 23, and we need to start with the code that we had on lesson number 23. So I'm going to come to 23. I'm going to copy that code. I'm going to come up and create a new... Arduino environment and we're going to start jumping in and developing some code here okay so we're going to start with the code from lesson number 23 
Boom. Easy as that. You can just do that along with me. Okay. So what do we need to change? Well, we got to kind of do what we did before. We got to load the SD card library, load the SPI library because we talked to the SD card with SPI protocol. We need to load our GPS uh, library. Remember that you've got to download this library and I think we show you how to do that in lesson 22. You've got to download it before you can load it. So if you just come in and copy my code, it's not going to work if you have not installed the Adafruit software. Uh, we work with the GPS with the software serial library, so we need to load that. All this stuff we've already explained, so I'm not going to go through it. But what do we need to do new? Well, we need some new variables here. Okay, we are going to need some new variables. And so where we created these, uh, these variables, uh, for the NEMA sentence 1, the NEMA sentence 2, and the character where we do, uh, do our reading, we're going to need some more variables here. What we're going to need is we are going to need a floating point variable that is just degrees, okay? And so this is just a decimal number that will represent our degrees. Because remember what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert that number that comes off the GPS in a goofy format into a format that Google Earth will like. And so we're going to need a floating point number degrees, okay? We'll hold position data in simple degree format. And then in order to create degrees, we're going to kind of need to have two different parts because we're going to have to create this number. We're going to need the whole number part and we're going to need the decimal number part. And then when we add the whole number to the decimal part, we'll get the final answer of degrees. So we're going to need degree <coughs> whole. You'll get a full explanation of this, but to start with, we've just got to get our variables. Uh, there, uh, this is the... Uh, Ver variable for the whole part of position. Okay, and then float, you need degree decimal. And this is variable for the decimal part of degree. So if I have the degree decimal and add it to the degree whole, I'll get the simple degree that is something that, that, that is what Google wants. Okay, We come down here and I think our void setup is still pretty much what it needs to be. Okay, We come down here and then what we say is, is that if, uh, if we have a fix, we only want to write this data if we have a fix. Okay, So here is where we're really going to get into something a little bit different, I think. We're still going to do this part. We still, I always save my NEMA sentences. I don't know why, even though I go in and do these parsing, I like to save my NEMA sentences and understand that what we're doing here, uh, the reason I'm working on this and my students are working on this, we do it for high altitude ballooning. And so if we create this really sophisticated, finely parsed data structure, and then we get back to the ground after you know going to the edge of space, and we find out that for some reason our parsing didn't work right, I always like to have access to that raw data. So what I do here is we're creating two files on the SD card. We're creating the NEMA text file, and we're creating the GPS data text file. And in the NEMA text file, we just open the file, and then we, remember when we do this read GPS, we're going out and we're grabbing two NEMA sentences, grabbing two NEMA sentences, and that we talked quite a bit about in Lesson 23. But we have those two NEMA sentences, and so I want to write them to this file. So I just write NEMA sentence 1, and I write NEMA sentence 2, and that puts them on the SD, file, uh, SD card. So we open the file. We write the two sentences and we close it. And so as this thing continues to read, every time it reads, it's going to throw two more NEMA sentences. And if it works right, there should be the, the, the RMC and the G, uh, GGA. You know, one will be an RMC and the other one will be a GGA. So we'll get both types of sentences that we want. And then we close the file. Okay, now we want to create this more finely parsed file and we want it to be something that Google Earth Okay, that Google Earth will be able to use. All right, let me uh, let me just briefly kind of show you what we're gonna gonna, gonna have to do here. Okay, let me explain to you so we you know what we're uh, you know what we're doing. Let me come up here to 
to lesson 25 and just kind of show you. When we get either a latitude or a, uh, let's see, when we get either a latitude or a longitude off of the GPS, it looks something like this. Okay, it looks something like this. And in fact, I'm wondering if I can even uh, open up that NEMA sentence to kind of show you what it looks like. Let's take a second and just look at that NEMA sentence. <clears throat> okay, uh, that is not a NEMA sentence. That is a bunch of NEMA sentences. So let's use this uh, GPRMC sentence, okay, and as we explained in the last uh, uh, in the last video, this is the number that we are interested in, okay, for latitude. And you can do the same thing for longitude, okay. But this is what we're interested in. The way we, we, we read this is if I go two spaces to the less, left of the decimal and from there to the end. So all of this from two spaces to the left of the decimal is minutes. So that is 51.839 minutes. Okay, and then this is your degrees, and so this is 30 degrees, 51.8339 minutes. This is 100 degrees and 35.9811, so this is latitude, this is longitude. <coughs> so how do I turn that into a simple decimal number where I don't have degrees and minutes, but I just have degrees dot fraction of a degree? Okay, I need to convert this mess into a simple decimal uh, number. And I will show you how to do that. Okay, if I can zoom back out. There we go. So what I know is the first thing I want is I want the degree part of this. Well, how can I get the degree part of this? If I take this number and I divide by 100, I will move the decimal point over here. So if I just divide by 100, I'll have 30.518007. The degree part will be right, and this will be nonsense. Okay, But if I take this number and divide by 100, the degree part would be the degree part. So if I take this number and divide by 100 and convert it to an integer, divide by 100, the decimal point moves over to there, and then uh, and then take take turn it into an integer, it whacks off all of this. I'm left with 30, which is the whole degrees, which is what I want. How do I do that? Degree whole is equal to float of integer of your number divided by 100. So number divided by 100 puts the decimal point here. Changing it to an int gets rid of all of this because the, all of this is to the right of the decimal. And then I turn it back into a float because I'm going to want it to have the right decimal part later on. But you see, by doing this, I get the number 30, which is the whole part of the degree. Now, how do I get the fractional part of the degree? Well, I take this and I subtract off the 30. But I can't subtract off 30. I have to subtract off 3,000 to get all of this to go away. So what I do is I take the degree whole and multiply by 100. By multiplying by 100, the decimal will move back out here. Instead of 30, I'll have 3,000. And so if I take this number, this whole number, this complete number, and I subtract degree whole times 100, I will be subtracting 3,000 from it. And what will I be left with? I'll be left with the minutes, 51 point. 8007. So I take degree whole, multiply by 100, subtract it from my original number, and I will be left with this, which is minutes in decimal form. So this will give me minutes in decimal form. There's 60 minutes in a degree. So if I take this and I divide by 60, I will always end up with a number less than 1, but it will represent the decimal fractional part of a degree. So I add that then, okay, so then this is the part to the right of the decimal point. This is the part to the left of the decimal point. And if I add degree whole to degree des, I'll get the degree. Okay, I will get the degree. 
So let's talk about this one more time so you're not confused. I divide by 100 and I, end, I move the decimal point here. I turn it into an int to get rid of everything to the right of the decimal point. Then if I multiply by 100, I end up with 3,000. I subtract that and I'm left with minutes, which will be 51.8. 007. I divide that by 60 and I get the fractional part of the degree. And so by doing these three simple steps, I end up with a simple decimal number that represents latitude. Okay? <clears throat> so let's go do that code. I hope you are not totally confused at this point. I think at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the I'm going to open the, the file. And that file is gpsdata.txt. And all this old stuff we did is no longer going to be stuff that is good. So I'm just going to open the file and close it. But I'm going to have to do some new stuff in here. And the first thing that I am going to need to do is I am going to need to calculate my longitude. This is the goofy thing. Okay, If I come up here to Google and I enter a coordinate in the search box it wants latitude comma longitude when I create a KML file for it to read in it wants longitude comma latitude backwards you see Google can't even nobody agrees on the formats even Google can't agree within itself of what what format to use so that is the mess that we are dealing with but the bottom line is I need to deal with longitude first because that in the KML file <coughs> is what is needed. So what do I do first? Well, let me get degree whole. Okay. And the degree whole is going to be equal to float of int of that long that goofy longitude number. Well, how do I get the goofy longitude number? I get the goofy longitude number with the Adafruit command, gps.longitude <coughs> divided by 100. Okay. I read the longitude from the GPS. I divide by 100. I convert it to an int. When I convert it to an int, it gets rid of all that wrong fractional part, and I'm just left with the raw whole degree. Okay, I've explained that enough. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna explain it anymore. Okay. So I need to end that twice. Alright, so let's make sure this closes this, the int part. That closes that. Okay. So this closes this, that closes that, that should be correct. And so this gives me the uh, whole degree part of longitude, right? I hope that makes sense. Okay, now I need the degree decimal. I need the decimal part. Well, how do I get that? It was just like I explained earlier. I need to take the original reading GPS dot longitude longitude there is no telling how badly I'm messing up here GPS dot longitude and then I need to subtract a hundred times this so I need that that decimal point move back to the right and so I need to subtract degree whole times a hundred okay so this is that whole GPS number and then I'm subtracting off the degree whole times a hundred. I'm I'm sorry I'm just getting hung on this, but you guys have got to understand this. Okay. So like if this is the number, I ended up degree whole was 30. I want just the 51.8007, so I have to not subtract 30, but I have to move the decimal point to the right twice to subtract 3000. So I have to multiply this whole degree by a hundred. I hope that makes sense. So when I multiply it by a hundred, now I've got the degree, I've got the minutes dot minutes. Okay, I've got the decimal form of minutes 
What do I do with that to turn it into a fraction of a degree? Well, there are 60 degrees in a minute. So to convert a minute to a degree, I divide by 60. OK. Gives, gives me fraction fractional part of longitude. OK. And then what do I have? I've got the G degree, the complete degree, is equal to what? Degree whole plus degree decimal. So now if I add the part to the left of the decimal point to the, plus the part to the right of the decimal point, I get the correct degree reading for longitude in one number. OK. Gives complete. Correct decimal form of longitude degrees. All right, so now I think I have the degrees. There's one last thing that you have to do is, and what you have to remember is, is that if you are in the northern hemisphere, this, uh, if, if you are in, I'm on longitude, so if you are in the eastern hemisphere, this is a positive number. If you are in the Western Hemisphere, this is a negative number. So I need to check and see which hemisphere I'm in. And I do that with the command gps.lat. Okay. And it, <coughs> LON, I'm on longitude. <coughs> if gps.lon is equal to, equal to what? West. If it is equal to west, what do I want? Degree is equal to minus 1 times degree. So if I'm in the Western Hemisphere, I've got to make degrees negative in order for Google to be happy. If I'm in the Western Hemisphere, degrees has to be negative, And that's what I do there. If I'm in the Eastern Hemisphere, I don't change it. Okay. Now I'm ready to print that. I'm ready to put that on the SD card. So I need to, my file object was my sensor data dot print. And I need to print my degrees. <coughs> and I need to give it four decimal points because if I do a print, it just defaults to two. I want all of that precision that I can get. So I need to put four. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I am writing, writing, decimal degree longitude val value to, S to SD card. That's what I'm doing. OK. Now I need to put a comma in, because remember, we want longitude, comma, latitude. So I need to print my comma. That part is easy. Right, comma to SD card. All right, so I should have now my longitude data point coordinate on there in the way that Google is happy with it, and I've got my comma. So now I need to do this again, but I need to do it for latitude. So I'm going to copy this, and this is, man, this is so dangerous to do this, but I want to be careful. So this time, degree whole is going to be latitude. Same process, but it's just latitude. Latitude. And then this becomes latitude. And this becomes latitude. And this becomes latitude. All right gives complete decimal four, and this becomes latitude. Now, this time, if we are on latitude, it's going to be the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. If we are in the nor northern hemisphere, it should be a positive number. If we are in the southern hemisphere, we'll put S, and we check that. Ooh, i got to be so careful here. This is now lat. Okay. If GPS lat is south, southern hemisphere, you need to make it negative. 
Okay, and now I print that and then I print my comma. Okay. Now, the final thing that I want to do, or almost the final thing, is my sensor data dot print. You need to print your altitude because remember we're trying to do this for a high altitude balloon and so you don't want just your longitude and latitude but you want your altitude, your elevation. And we get that from the Adafruit using GPS.altitude and that's already reported in meters which is what the KML file is going to want. So I do that. I have one line, one coordinate. Now longitude, comma, latitude, comma, altitude. I have found what works is to separate these three data points with a space to say, okay, longitude, latitude, altitude, space. Longitude, latitude, altitude, space. I don't put an end line. I don't put a print line, a carriage return, a new line, any of that stuff. I just put a space. And it seems like Google Earth parses that well. So what I need to do is a single space like that. So this is right altitude to file, and this is this is for format with one white space to delimit data sets. Okay, then I close that file and all this other stuff we've already done. This is scary stuff. This is scary stuff. Let's see if it downloads. If it downloads, I'm still going to have to go around, go outside and walk around, and then make sure that all this data parsed up right. But let's just see if we can just get, get it to compile. Ow! What is wrong here? I've got my commas. I've got my... Uh, my. Ah, what did I not do? I did not put a semicolon. Okay. And did I not do it down here as well? Yes. Okay. I better put a comment here. If you are in, if you are in Western Hemisphere, uh, longitude degrees should be negative. Okay. And down here, if you are in Southern Hemisphere latitude should be negative. All right. Okay. So just a minor little problem. Happens to everyone. We all forget our semicolons. In the heat of coding, we sometimes forget our semicolons. It is going to download. It did not download. Let's see if I have a serial monitor open somewhere. No. Let me just try it again. Sometimes it... Ah! <laughs> Why did it not download? It is not plugged in. Important point. Plug your serial cable in. You will have better luck downloading your data. All right, let's see here. Seems happy. Still seems happy. Getting a little nervous. Ah, boom. All right. I got to plug my SD card in. I got to plug my battery in. I got to go for a walk and come back, and we will see if this works. I will be back momentarily. Okay, I am back. I just walked outside for a little bit of a walkabout, and I took the circuit with me. And so if things worked according to plan, and I think they did, we will have taken data with the GPS, logged it to the SD card and logged it in a format that is Google Earth friendly, a format that we should just be able to load in and see the track. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and do that. I've got this. I like to it's hard to take this thing out gracefully. What I like to do is I like to at least unplug it so that it's not on. There's no power to it and then pop it out. There's no like eject command you can give that I'm aware of in uh, Arduino, but I'm going to pop it into the computer. Yes, I would like to open it. <clears throat> Let's start by looking at our NEMA sentences and see how that looks. This looks good. You can see we got the RMC, the GGA, the RMC, the GGA. And so every time.
time we went out and grabbed two sentences, we were getting one of each type, which is what we wanted. We're not seeing like doubles getting this the same one twice. And so that is really, really good. And also you remember that we don't start logging data until we get a fix. And so you can see on these first data points, we already have our fix. Just curious, it looks like I've started out with six satellites, seven satellites, got up to nine satellites, eight satellites. Lights. And so that looks pretty good. I think this is going to be good data. And so let's come over here. Now, there's one little thing that we got to do if we want to get this to show up in uh, in Google Earth. And, and, you know, I got the format. I got the format good as far as, remember, we wanted longitude, comma, latitude, comma, altitude, and then a white space. And this should probably look good. Yeah, so that is, that's my longitude. That's my latitude. And that's my altitude, longitude, latitude, altitude, and with a white space between each group of three data points. And so this looks like what we were shooting for. All right, the thing though is, is that still this is not going to open up in Google Earth. There's one more thing that we have to do. Like let's just, uh, uh, let's just, just try it. Like if I came and I said, open with, and I said choose program, and I said browse, and I, if I look at the desktop, I should find Google Earth, and if I try to open it, what you can see is, is that it's not going to come in, it's not going to bring that file in. And here it is, and if I zoom in, it doesn't give you an error, but you can see that it, it loaded it, but it's just not showing it. You've got to put some more information in there for it to actually show it. And so that's what I'm going to show you how to do. I'm going to show you how to load that. Uh, I'm going to show you how to load that in there. And what you need is you need to go back to my website, and that is going to be uh, that is going to be www.toptech boy.com you want to come to lesson 25 and down in lesson 25 I have the wrapper I have the KML wrapper you want to wrap around those coordinates that are in the proper format the data is in the coordinates you just got to put a wrapper on it and the wrapper that you want is down here and it's the KML wrapper and so you can just get this wrapper and you can copy it Control C from my website. Then what you can do is you can come to your notepad and you can put the wrapper in it. All right, so don't worry about this. You, the goal here is not to become a KML expert, but the goal is to know that your coordinates go between coordinates and closed coordinates. They all, all go in here. And so I need to go back to my file with the coordinates <coughs> right here. And this was that text file on the SD card. So the Arduino created this file, put it on the SD card. I put the SD card in the computer. I opened it in the computer and notepad. Now the easiest way to co uh, copy it is Control A. It selects everything. Control Copy. <coughs> Copies it. Now let's go back to this wrapper, this KML wrapper, and let me paste that. Right? I pasted it between coordinates and end coordinates, and now I'm going to do a save as. I need to make this all files so that it doesn't put the txt extension on it. What I will do is my walkabout and then .kml to tell it it's a KML file and put it on the desktop. Okay. And now you know what I got to do? I got to go find this on the desktop, which uh, is never fun. Give me just a second. Now walk about. Okay, I'll bring it down here. All right. So now I've got this my walkabout, and I will put it here where you can see it. So this was the file that we made the KML file. So what we're going to do now is we are going to right mouse click on that, and we're going to open with Google Earth. And so it pops open there, and I just can't wait to see what's going to happen. I'm going to close that, get this looking the right size, stop getting bigger, get rid of that. And I'm zooming into Texas and to the great city of El Dorado. And look at that. There is my track, and that fact is the walk that I just made. <coughs> I'm outside. I walked along the grass, turned left, I went over these cars. Now, these cars are not there right now. Remember, Google Earth gives you a, 
a historical view, so I didn't walk on top of them. You can see that I'm still staggering. I, again, guarantee you that I am completely sober, and I was walking in a straight line. But this is about 10 foot of noise in the data. I came down to the crosswalk. I went across the crosswalk. Came, went down the street, went over, came back, and then came back into the school. Okay. Neat about this is particularly if you think about our objective of making an instrument package for a high altitude balloon, our edge of space work here, our space probe is that this actually has the altitude data. Look at this. Now understand. On a GPS like this, there can be like 50 feet of uncertainty on the GPS altitude. So when you're walking along, what you got to know is, is that this isn't going to show that you're walking along at 5 feet. It's going to be too high and too low, and there's going to be 50 feet of noise. But if you're going to 130,000 feet, 50 feet doesn't matter. If you're flying an airplane, 50 feet doesn't matter. Well, last 50 feet matter. But as far as navigation, it doesn't really matter. And so for the things I really want, high altitude ballooning, edge of space, space probe, and uh, unmanned aerial drones, this works just absolutely great. And what you can see is, let's see if I can kind of zoom in here and show you. Okay, let me come this way like this. And what you could see is I actually start out kind of accurate. That's about five feet probably, which is the height of it. As I walked along, it got a little noise. It kind of got up high and came down. So overall, it's not too shabby. For most of it, it was pretty accurate. Probably went from about five feet up to 50 feet as far as what it was reading. So about 50, 50 feet of noise. And what's really neat is I can continue to zoom and I can actually get the Google Earth view. Okay. And this line would represent where I was walking. Let me kind of come over here. This is really kind of crazy to do this because the funny thing is, is that that is my car, my pickup parked out front, and my piss parked out front, but it's just that is not a picture of my pickup out there today. But when I look at that, it's just like, well, there's my pickup. We'll know this. This was from, you know, some, some months ago. The Google Earth, uh, the, the street view was taken some months ago. But you can see that's probably pretty accurate there. And I can sort of drive along here. <coughs> and you can see my altitude's getting a little bit off. But I was walking right there. And this just shows a 3D view of my path. This, like I say, isn't particularly exciting when you're just walking around. But imagine how exciting this is going to be when this is a 3D track of your high altitude space probe. Okay, those tracks get pretty interesting. Well, how close are we to doing that? How close are we to doing that? Look at this. This thing I can run off of a battery and I can save the data to a card, you could just about strap this thing onto a high altitude balloon right now and be logging yourself some data. You, you know, the neat thing about this is, is that you've made your own instrument package. You didn't just go buy something off the shelf. You designed and built and, and coded up and implemented something yourself. Now, what is true is before that you use this as a, uh, you know, as an instrument package, we've got to do something better than all these wires running everywhere because these little plug-in wires, you know how easy they plug in, they unplug just that easily. So we would have to come up with a more ruggedized implementation of it, but that's the easy part and the fun part. The hard work, the heavy lifting has been done because we've got something that runs on a battery, that saves data all in a small package that we can just let her rip and wherever it goes, it's going to come back and we're going to have data on this thing. And so I think this is it's just super, super exciting. Hopefully you've been keeping up with me here on the last few lessons. I'm kind of thinking maybe the direction I'll go next is, uh, and we've already worked with the pressure and temperature sensor. Maybe put that pressure and temperature sensor on here so that we're measuring pressure, uh, pressure temperature, and our location in three-dimensional, log it to the card, and at that point you would have a pretty nice start on an instrument package for a space pro okay then what I'll do is maybe I'll come in and show you that that uh, some of the things that we'll be doing is that if we're going to go to space like we did back here I keep saying this is a real thing I mean we send these things up to 130,000 feet look at it you see the blackness of space the earth's atmosphere is just a tiny thin blue line and you can see the curvature of space uh, the curvature of the earth and so that is pretty slick well if we're going to do that you know all the sudden size and weight becomes really important and so you, instead of using 
using this Arduino Uno. There is a miniature version of the Uno. It's exactly the same. The software is the same. The pins are the same. Everything is the same, but it's just this size, and it's called the Nano. And so probably what I'm going to do in a couple of lessons is show you how you'll get a PC board, and instead of using the Arduino Uno, you'll use the Arduino Nano and kind of plug it into this board and you can see the pins coming out the back and you can see the front of it and then plug all of those components into this board and then we've got to wire everything up and the way we're going to do that is an old art that is almost completely forgotten at this point called wire wrapping and I show you how you can wire wrap up yourself a package that you could actually do on something like this or on a you know on a, a, a 3D robot or on a, a a, a quadcopter or an unmanned aerial drone, all of those th things you would want something in as small of a form factor as possible. And I'll show you how you can take some very inexpensive components and wire wrap something up. That'll probably be a couple of lessons from now, but uh, but for now, man, this has been great. I hope you guys are really doing this project, keeping up with me. Uh, you guys leave me questions on the uh, on YouTube or on my website that all of these videos, I have the videos on YouTube, which you can watch there and leave comments or you can watch them on my website where I've got some more supporting the supporting code and all that sort of stuff. You guys subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Leave me a thumbs up. You know, maybe, uh, maybe register there at my website. Ask questions. I'd be happy to help you. Talk to you guys later.